Are there ever times where the vision is so big it scares the shit out of you? All the time. Okay, right, good. Right now. Okay, thank right you. Right now. I was a teen mom. I was 14 and pregnant. I didn't even have a driver's license, but I had a baby. I'm not who they say I am. I will not be who they think I will be. Let me show them. If you just know the right person and that's know it. the right question to ask, that's it. You can find any answer that you need. A cup of coffee with the right person will change your entire trajectory. They say diversify, Lindsay. So I diversified. Let's fine. start a whole publishing company. I'd say I don't think oh, that's what they meant. I don't think that's what they meant, but go on. Be honest with yourself and start yep. to ask the question, what could this look like to exit? When it's time, it's time. When you know you're done, you're done. Sarah, welcome to Powerhouse Women. Oh my gosh, thank you. About damn time. I was going to say, so long overdue. How many episodes is this? I really had to wait wait, wait, until... How many? many? This is 500 plus. 500? You made me wait 500 episodes to finally... Because you know what they say, save the the best best for last. The best. So today is the day. Thank you. No pressure. Kindness, I appreciate it. Flattery (laughs) will get you everywhere. Everywhere, (laughs) everywhere. So I love, I actually love that we're dropping in at this part of our journey because yeah. you've scaled this incredible media company, No, K-N-O-W. Yes, yes not No. Right. We also no. are big believers in saying No, but we're saying K-N-O-W. Yes. We're you've saying had, yes to No. Pro, you've had five exits, sold companies. Yes. And your story is one of those stories that proves that anyone can create whatever it is that they want, no matter what their circumstances are, no matter what their starting origin story is, because you were a teen mom, you you scaled these companies, you've built this incredible business, but you have this beautiful family as well. Yeah. And I just think that today was the day that we were meant to share all of this goodness on the Powerhouse Women podcast. Finally, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's an honor to be here. And it's been really exciting as someone who like knew you before to like, we were just comparing notes, like watch you really like be where you are today. It's just such a, it's so exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. And it's such an honor to be like building these parallel communities yeah. like that at our core is what we both love is creating spaces for women to be celebrated. And I remember the first time that I heard about what you were doing with the no book at that time, right? which we'll talk about all the different facets okay. of this media empire you're building. But it was just this simple premise of, no, people should know who these women are mm-hmm. in all of these different cities. Mm-hmm. So what was it that inspired you to take that idea and turn it into the beginnings of now what's become this media empire? Oh my gosh, what a what a question. I think um you know, I talk a I talk a lot about when you're creating a brand or you're creating something, there's always a little bit of you in it, right? Mm. And not going into too much detail, long, long story could be really, really long. I started no because I needed it. Because when I moved to Phoenix, Arizona, where I'm based, and um, I'm originally from North Carolina, I didn't know anyone, yeah. right? And so um, coming in as a seven-figure entrepreneur, already pretty well into my business, we had scaled our our original concept pretty wildly. I come here to Phoenix. Um, my husband is a lawyer. He comes here for law school, third career, I like to laugh. And I didn't know anyone. So I thought, how do I find my tribe? How do I find my crew? How do I find my, my people, my clients, my sisters, my, where do I shop? Where do I do? What do I do? I have, yeah. I don't know what to do. I knew no one. And so no was really started as a little bit of this journey that I was on. Mm-hmm. I immersed myself into every room networking, going into all of these bad events, all these great events, but mm-hmm. literally immersing myself into every single possible scenario in pursuit of finding my people. Mm. Um, I'll save you all of the crazy stories, but there are a lot of wild things out there. If you know, if you've ever known, if anyone here has ever networked, oh you my know, gosh. 
it's, it's like crazy. The things that they ask you that they want from you that, you know, like business card stabbing and like offense and defense and like the craziness <laughs> that happens. And you're laughing because you know, because exactly I know I, you just gave me flashbacks right. to my first years in Phoenix. Too. Right. So we imagine that, but then also imagine on the flip side of that, walking into these rooms and saying, Oh my gosh, she's amazing. She's really cool. Mm. I want to do more life with her, more business with her. And I really feel like I'm finding something for myself. But then why, why don't women know each other? Why mm. aren't women doing more together? Is it that they're all in all of these different rooms? So they haven't had the opportunity. Why are the local magazines and, you know, uh, organizations constantly like reusing the same people. It's mm. like, they literally do this and I'm not, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying what's really honest and real out there. Why aren't we going in and finding mm -hmm. these amazing hidden gems in our city? Mm -hmm. And I would have never been able to do that if I hadn't moved here. Mm -hmm. Right. I would have never mm -hmm. done that. I was in my safe space at home. I uh, knew everyone. I was very comfortable, but it was going to an uncomfortable place in my own journey and this collision in my career and, and life and everything that said, you know what? Like, we need to do something for women to spotlight other women. Plus, I'm just really, I geek out of like about buying from women. I want to buy yeah. from a local business and she's a woman. Like how great is that? Yeah. yeah. And so there, there was no. And same, Boom, it's like, it was created just like that. And a true entrepreneur will have that thought and then within the next week, have a business plan around it. Oh yeah. Right? It that's was so like, fast. That's how you so know. so fast. Um, my friends, my husband, my, my people, they're like, they know, they just know now, you know, like, I'm like, oh, I you do. get the look Go. in your eye. <laughs> They're like, God, she's about to be at it again. But it was the same thing. So I conceptualized yeah. this back in, this is 2017. We conceptualized this in, I want to say July, I went home. So very fun story. I tell people never burn a bridge, mm. never burn the bridge. Maybe you can exit, maybe your seasons change, but you never know when you're going to be back together again. And so you really have to like conduct every relationship with like the utmost care because you never know when you're going to need that person. They're going to need you. So when I launched my first business at 26, my very first client was a magazine publisher back in Raleigh, North Carolina, where I'm from. And he's a guy, right? I freelanced accounting with him as a fractional accounting manager. So when I, when I said, okay, hmm, there's something we have really magical happening here. We have to bring these women together. I've always loved the idea of, and, and no is like from the get-go was print. Like, I love the idea of touching it and feeling it and like holding it and reading it and flipping. There's like this whole thing. It's visceral. Yes. That, that I, I felt right. So I immediately went back to him. I hadn't seen him in years. He's always been a huge supporter. Mm -hmm. We ended our relationship. He actually fired me. He goes, you were, you've grown too fast and too big. You need to leave now. And I go, no, 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 no. I'm here forever. <laughs> and he's like, go, go fly friend. So we've always stayed in touch. And I went back mm -hmm. home in July in 2017. And I said, Hey David, can I meet you for coffee? I have a, I have an idea. Tell me if I'm crazy. You're the magazine publishing guru. You've been in the business for 30 years. And we came out of that conversation and I remember it like yesterday and he's Southern. So I mock his accent all the time. And he's like, Sarah, I don't really know. Like I've never seen anything like this yeah. before. What do you need? And there, Noah was born. So July, we had our first publication out by February because you, you, you just as an entrepreneur, you just take it and you're running. And we were running, and I did. I had never published anything. I have no journalism background. I do not have a media background, mm -hmm. but I knew what I needed. I knew what other women were needing, and just by opening a conversation, it all began. Which is such a rare skill set. I mean, maybe not so rare in the circles that we find ourselves in with other entrepreneurs, but where did that start for you? Have you, have you had that tenacity from a young age? What is it in you that just gives you that drive? I die laughing because, um, <laughs> so Sydney, my 16 year old, she's now got her first job. She's thinking yeah. about like what she wants to do for a living. And so all the time I go, well, you know, I did this when I was like, XX. Oh, I did this job and I had this job and I did that job. There is hope for people out there who can't settle on one thing because I'm like a Jackie of all trades. And I think that mm. she's like, mom, is there any type of job you've never done? And I'm like, I don't think so. I think I've done them all from bartending and waiting tables mm. to, you know, accounting. I was an accountant before I ever became an entrepreneur, but I would say 
probably a lot of curiosity mm-hmm. is, is really what has led me to where I am today mm-hmm. and just looking for solutions and being aware and just not being afraid. Right. Mm-hmm. So Jackie of all trades, master of none, but willing to figure it out. I'm really gritty and I'm really like curious. So I will Google to the end or ask someone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's really, I mean, I think that it really is just this innate, like born with nature. Mm. And the way I would categorize you, like outside of everything that's on your bio is I feel like every time we get to drop in together, it's your vision. vision. You always, always have this big vision mm-hmm. for the future. Mm-hmm. Are there ever times where the vision is so big, it scares the shit out of you? <laughs> All the time. Okay, right, good. Right now. Okay, thank right you. now. I just told you about this like major transition yeah, that we're in. Yeah. I'm really going back to the roots of of media, and we've dabbled in some some other things. But it's like, man, I think when you feel like your vision scares you, you we look around at the context clues, and we're like, mm-hmm. or we just like center ourselves, and we're like, okay, I'm on the right track. There are signs that we're on the right track. And I think when we lean into those, then you just keep some, but sometimes Lindsay, you just have to do like close your eyes and just keep going and just keep going and keep going. Literally. You know? That's how it feels. Yeah. And I think it's so important for people to hear someone like you, who we can see the external of what you've built in seven years. That's not that long. Right. It actually isn't a long it's time. Really not. While raising a family, while cultivating this beautiful relationship and and so many connections, that's the other thing is you're just one of the most well-connected people, not just in your own city, but no has expanded into multiple cities. Yeah. And it's easy, I think, looking from the outside in to look and say, well, how does she do it? She must have something that I don't. No. Nope. What would you say to that person who oh. sees this version of your life and is like, yep, I could never do that? Well, this is what I talk about often, right? So it's all about confidence and we build our confidence Mm -hmm. by doing, we Mm -hmm. really Mm -hmm. have to do, 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 do. I wasn't born like this, maybe a little crazy, but not Mm -hmm. all the way as crazy as we have. Like we all have, I think at least one or two genes that are maybe wired for crazy. For (laughs) me, it's really interesting because people see the Sarah now and, and I love her love every, I love every version of Sarah that has ever come. And Mm -hmm. I think that that's really important too, is to like, to learn to love yourself in the place you're in now and to honor the moments that you are in. I think Mm -hmm. that's a big part of the journey and, and not be so, so quick to rush the next, the next, the next, the next. But you know, you mentioned, and I, I, I tell all the time I was a teen mom. Mm-hmm. I was 14 and pregnant. I had my son mm-hmm. at 15. People look at me and they're like, you have a 16 year old. And I'm like, oh, I can beat that. I have a 27 year old. You look barely what? older than 27 yeah. yourself. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And I think it goes back to making those big, bold decisions Mm-hmm. At 14, did I know what I was getting into? Hell no, absolutely not. I had no idea what I was getting into. I mm-hmm. thought I did, right? Because at 14, we all we know we everything. All, we know everything. <laughs> this will be easy. It was not. Okay, let's just be clear. It's yeah. motherhood at any age is not easy. Yeah. Um, but at 15, I didn't even have a driver's license. I'll just put it put it when into that perspective, like that. right? Yeah. I didn't even have a driver's license, but I had a baby, right? I didn't have. I couldn't even hold a full time job because I was in high school. So I left high school. I ended up dropping out of high school because it hit me this one moment. And I remember it so vividly. I was in the grocery store with my mom and she was buying formula for me. Mm -hmm. Right. And I go like, there's something wrong with this. This is not, this is Mm -hmm. not acceptable. And I was working at Chick-fil-A, but Chick-fil-A was not, you know, was not a salary that could cover formula. So I said, I've, I've got to do something about this. Like, this is where I am. This is who I am. I'm not going to be a victim of my own circumstances. Sometimes we run into situations, whether they are by choice or they are not things happen. Right. Mm -hmm. But as long as we're willing to take a strong stand and we're willing to like accept where we are and take actionable steps to move forward and we're looking for solutions instead of dwelling in our problems, anything's possible. And so it was those key decisions really early on Yeah, that really helped form my life as an entrepreneur, but it was commitments to myself too. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the rest of the world was thinking like this high school girl is pregnant. Like what? Well, just, you know, 
sell her up sure because she's not going to be anything while she had so much promise she was going to be so great and Mm. she was just that cute girl she was just so pretty she had so many great things I was like on the AB honor roll when I got pregnant Mm. right I wasn't I was a little bit bad but I wasn't (laughs) all the way all the way bad but I still made the grades I still did what I needed to do exactly so it was a little bit of like a commitment to myself but also let me show them Mm. I'm I'm not who they say I am. I will not be who they think I will be. Mm. And it was those commitments. Like I couldn't, I had to, I dropped out of school at 15. I wasn't 16. So you couldn't even get a GED until you were 16. So I dropped Mm. out of school. Um, The day I turned 16, I enrolled in GED school. I got the GED in four weeks. So then I like passed all the people that were still in high school because then I enrolled into community college immediately, right? Like, so I knew I was going to set myself up for the life that I deserved. I just took a different route. And I think so many people, they think that there's this perfect life and maybe things have happened and they can't lead the perfect life, but it doesn't matter the route that you take. Mm. It's really just about getting there. Mm. And it, what I can hear too is like in those moments that you just had a decision to make. That was it. Was it, it going to define you? Were you going to fall into the story that everyone else was trying That's to put right. on you? That's right. Or create your own, which right. you clearly did. Clearly. I ended up getting the GED. I ended up back back in the day, Lindsay, we were called secretaries. We sound like we're so old fashioned, but this wasn't that long ago. I know. So my first real job, I they asked me to come in as a secretary, which was actually a bookkeeper. <laughs> and I started my my accounting career there. Mm-hmm. 10 years to get a bachelor's degree, but worked my way up and up and up and up in the accounting field. And then what I did was I worked small business. So those jobs that Sydney said, I had all the different jobs. I literally worked in every industry. Yeah. I worked for an interior designer. I worked for a construction company. I worked for a painting company. I worked for all of these companies, but learning the intricate like operations of these Mm. small businesses. So then when it was my time to leap out and jump, I had been building businesses Mm. and operations for 10 years. And that's the stuff they don't teach us in school. You really learn on the job as you you go. So it's no surprise that you scaled, I mean, five companies and sold them. And now you're, is is no your sixth technically? No is, oh my gosh. I remember at one point, I'm like, and, or did we lose count at this point? Right. How so many businesses my, there my CPA, I had this running joke with him. I said, am I like the one with the most LLCs? I have one <laughs> at one point I have 14 LLCs. I so right? feel this. And he was like, actually you are, but, and I go, well, I gotta get rid of some of these. There's like way yeah. too many. Yeah. So I, I only have two now. So yeah. yeah. What were some of the biggest lessons you've learned in scaling and selling those first companies? So when it's time, it's time. When you know you're done, you're done. Mm. But don't think that you have to close. I think that's a huge misconception that especially people who have had businesses for a long time build build to sell or build to pass. When you're going into your company, whether you're building foundations now or you're into mm-hmm. your company, you need to think about exit. What is tomorrow looking like? And how do you like take from this company even when it's time to say goodbye? Mm-hmm. One of the things that I did was I knew I was ready. I knew I was meant for more and I knew I wanted to scale this. And it was actually my husband who said, you know, we, so let me just tell you what the company was just so, cause you're like, what is that? It was a concierge company, a business, yeah. um, personal assistant company. And I, it was my way out of working for the man. Right. So Sydney was a year and I go, I just need freedom and flexibility. Launch this business. It grew wildly, wildly. I don't even know how it just did. It just grew wildly. And so he came up to me and he said, have you ever thought about taking this out to other cities? And I said, no, because I just wanted to like get out of my, Yeah. I just wanted my nine to five. Like I just wanted to like replace my income. And I realized he helped me realize I was thinking way too small Mm -hmm. and that it was meant for more. And it was, how could we replicate this business model. So then I turned my business brain on, which I love more than anything. I loved business and vision more than I loved any type of cleaning a toilet, scheduling staff, doing any of those things, right? Like that was just not me. I didn't, CEO. I, didn't, I didn't create a business, a personal yeah. assisting business to like be your personal assistant. Yeah. I created it again because of the need. So we shift into business growth mindset. How are we going to build this and scale this and grow this? And that was our first baby. 
that we were able to scale. And so I worked myself out of that job first. I ended up selling it to one of my licensees. So I created a licensing opportunity for people around the country to buy into this brand. And they did, which was wild, but they did. When we moved to Phoenix, I thought I was just moving our West Coast operations here. But I kept feeling this need to do more. So no started as a fun side project because mm-hmm. I was just, I wanted to do something fun. I was just tired of running this, this business and this concept and, and all the things. Yeah. But I think the biggest tip is when you know you're done, be done and just let mm. it go. Don't run it into the ground because you know you don't want to do it. Instead, think about yeah. how you can exit from it profitably right? Instead of like turning and turning and turning and turning and just like setting it on fire and walking away. Right. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Or getting to that point where, you know, as the person leading it, if your energy is not in it, that starts to leak into the business if you let that go on for too long. So I love that just to be honest with yourself and start to ask the questions of what could this look like to exit with any business that we're scaling, there is There are assets that have value. Right. And that's what I love about just even the community you've curated, because like you're saying, you you weren't thinking that big for yourself. It was someone else's vision who unlocked it within you. And being able to be surrounded by other founders and women are just what's so cool about the No Network is that it's women in corporate, women in all these different industries who, if you just know the right person and know the right question to ask. That's it. You can find any answer that you need. A hundred percent. When I started my first business at 26, they didn't have coaches. They didn't have Mm -hmm. um, masterminds. They didn't have anything, right? Mm -hmm. So we we were kind of like these like lone souls at it to try to figure it out on our own. Mm -hmm. And we had to get really scrappy back then. I mean, you would hire a consultant, but like when you were first starting, like how could you hire like yeah. a, a really expensive consultant? I'm yeah. bootstrapping. So I learned to ask those big questions. I learned mm-hmm. to engage with people and ask them for coffee. And one of my favorite taglines is a cup of coffee with the right person will change your entire trajectory. And that's what our organization and our community on the community side of No is really built around making the big ask. And I know you talk about this all the time, mm-hmm. right? Making the big ask standing boldly and firmly and knowing you're meant to be there and finding the people that can help you because there are a lot of people who want to help. There are people that I'm actively mentoring and I want to help see them because I believe in them and I know they have like the willingness to actually do do the things I tell them to do. Right. Wait, right. Well, do let's what be I honest. Said. If right. you're going to ask someone to mentor you, you better be prepared to That's, please act take on, their mentorship yes. and put it into action. That's right. And I yeah. think that it's getting in front of the right people and, mm-hmm. and the right and the right faces who can actually set you on fire and push you forward. Mm-hmm. And And really like thanks to vision of people like you because it's not natural to everybody or right. women who are in corporate America who don't have access other than maybe professional organizations mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. no is fitting into this it's just fitting a gap that not really anyone else is serving especially for those of us who want to support other women right. We want to know other women who aren't in our normal circles yeah. and who aren't even just in our city. That's so right. So take me from that initial conversation with the gentleman who I've already forgot his name in David. publishing. David, mm-hmm. we love you, David. David, he's amazing. Never asked me for anything either. That's uh, the best, right? Just How can I the help vision. you? To this day, one of our biggest cheerleaders never wow. asked for anything. Wow. And he's just like enjoying watching this thing go. And he's a guy too, which is interesting got just guys guys support women too but yeah. you know and to what it has grown into today so if sarah 7 years ago could have seen what's what it's grown into what would you what would you tell her if you could go and sit with sarah who's about to have that first conversation like it's about to get so good oh my gosh guess what's coming I had no idea again think like side project fun project yeah. i was tired yeah. of <laughs> of the same old thing. And I really, they, they say diversify, Lindsay. So I diversified. I was like, let's just try something else. This is let's fine. start a whole publishing company. I, say, I don't think I that's what they meant. I don't think that's what they meant, but go on. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it I worked out okay. Who knew? Who knew that this was going to happen? But that's the truth is, it's yeah. like the very best things yeah. that happen are just literally a step in a dream and then like mm. action. So 
we're about to be working on our eighth volume of No Phoenix, which you are actually a part of. Mm. Um, originally, do you remember that you were well, featured I in No, like way the back second in the volume, day, second volume. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, that I was know. about three hair colors ago for me. So that's right. how I know it was a while ago. <laughs> that's okay. a lot of Lindsay's ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Um. So we're working on eighth volume. We mm-hmm. have an incredible strategic plan collectively. We're about 13,000 strong at no mm. in seven years. So these are all women who are business owners. They're executives. They're ambitious women who are highly focused on getting to the next level. Um, we've really identified who we serve and who she is, right? We are hosting our annual conference. We now have award series. So we have a 40 so over 40. So I'm here for this. I love this, right? hundred women to know in America. And I mean, Jamie Kern Lima, who was mm-hmm. one of your friends and one of your speakers, mm-hmm. um, at your recent, at your recent conference was one of our winners like last yeah. year, I think. So like we yeah. are, who knew this was going to happen? Isn't that wild? Who knew? Yeah. I couldn't even imagine this back then. I just think that's so important for the woman who's sitting there with, I'm just imagining like the notepad of the initial vision right. going, okay, I don't really see where this is going, or maybe it's, this is my side project. Mm -hmm. I just know I want more freedom. I wish I could actually take people. I wish there were time machines. We could take them back to to have coffee with the version of us seven years ago to see, I think what you would all see if we could do that is you'd see yourself. You would. And I think that like, a lot of the decisions that I'm making now, so we have a nonprofit, no cares, and we're doing mm-hmm. granting and leadership development and funding and things like that. And I think it's like, I always go back to like 26 year old Sarah, who was that very first business owner who had no idea what she was doing, mm-hmm. but had a lot of aunties and a lot of like fairy yeah. godmothers yeah. along the way to help her. And then I go back to like Sarah, who eight years ago, right? Like who was now in her 30s, mid 30s, launching another huge concept that she had no idea was going to be this big, but thinking like, you never know, Mm -hmm. you never know. And if you don't try, then you never will. Mm -hmm. Right. So Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's a lot of like intuition and God too. I think you have to really like get in with yourself and not be afraid and really center yourself. And look, we could talk about naysayers all day long because there's so many of them Mm -hmm. from 14 who are like, she's never going to do anything. She's going to have a hundred kids by the time she's 30, you know, that type of thing where you're like, hmm. You get to choose at the end of the day. Mm. And if you silence the voices and you really lean into what you think God or your whoever, you know, whoever your higher power is, is calling you to do and you take your passion and you just keep moving forward, you're bound for success. Yeah. Uh, So I know what a passion you have for helping women build community, helping them build their network. Yeah. And I would love to hear just your perspective on as we're building a network, as women who have big visions we want to bring to life, who are the kind of people that are important Mm. for us to surround Mm. ourselves with? This is my most favorite. I'm so glad you asked this because it's my favorite. I'm so glad you put it on your podcast intake form. This is the best thing I want to talk about all day. This is all I want to talk about. I love this. So as and I speak to women, yeah. you speak to women. Yeah. I, I mean, guys, you could probably guys, get, you can you get know, a little tune this out. out. <laughs> this too, it doesn't matter. But for my ladies who are listening, I always say there's really three types of people you need to have in your life, and it's really, really, really important that you you focus on where the lack is mm. and really serve and 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 bring that one forth too. Because depending on where you are in your season, chances are you probably have at least two of these, but you probably don't have enough of the other. And I think that it's important for everyone to do this self-assessment and audit. So we're going to do this together okay, right now. I love this. Okay. So number one, you have to have your peers. You have to have your peers mm-hmm. because they understand where you are right now. When you have a hell of a day, you call your peers. When you're in the thick of it, you call your peers. Mm-hmm. You have to have your peers because they get where you are right now. 
but you also have to have the women who are your sponsors. Those that are ahead of you, the women that you aspire, your aspirational women who've been there, done that, paved the way. Those are the women who are actively pulling you up. You have to have those women in the room with you as well, because if you don't, then who's helping you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's so important. And generally we have those two people. Yeah. Right. We have our peers who are in it with us day in and day out. And oh my gosh, Lindsay, can you believe, let me tell you what happened. You know what I mean? Like we have those conversations all the time. Thank if you have that circle, for those, you have to have those sisters, Friends. those sisters. Yes, yes, exactly. But also those aspirational people who are like, let me help you mm -hmm. come here, honey. Let me tell you a little something. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a little inside, you know, tip or trick to help you get further faster. And you want that because they are where you're going. Like mm -hmm. you want to have those people in your life too mentors, but don't forget to be the mentor to someone else. Mm -hmm. That's the part. I think a lot of people aren't actively thinking about it because we're in do, do grow, 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 but you have to be a blessing. It is your duty to give back. And just like I said, you want someone pulling you forward. You have to pull other women mm -hmm. with you. Otherwise you have mm -hmm. this, like, you're not full. You don't have a full life. And when we know, like we know studies show, show that when we're pouring into other women, we're also filling our buckets too. And it's really fun to see sort of this like whole circle of people that will show up for you. And the ones that you're pulling behind you will show up for you equally as much as those that are cheering you on from yeah. ahead. Right. Yeah. So those three people you have to, I want everyone to, who listens to this or is watching this, think about, do you have at least a few of mm. each of those in your life? And some people may say, well, I don't know. I'm just getting started mm. or I'm really young. I don't know. I don't, you know, I, I'm just still trying to figure this out for myself, but I would encourage you to really yeah. think past that because you bring something. Every single person brings something to the table. Mm. Even if you're the youngest person in the room, you bring innovation. You bring TikTok soft, skills, software <laughs> skills. That I, I don't say. know. You bring something, right? So think about what you bring yeah. to the table and how you can help as well as take, right? It's that give, give, take kind mm. of mentality. So those are the three things, the three people. It's so, it's so simple. And like you said, a great opportunity on a seasonal basis to mm -hmm. audit who are the people that are your peers for this season. That's it. Who's expanding you next. But then I, I think back to previous versions of me too, that had that imposter syndrome of, well, am I, who could I help? I'm, I'm just getting started myself. And to remember, I remember feeling this way when I was mentoring people around health and fitness, it's, it's the reminder that when you're in the journey and even closer to the stage of someone who you're speaking into, you're the most relatable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably a little bit harder for some women who are just starting out maybe to relate to where we are now, but the woman who's just a month or two ahead of them yep. has a different perspective that is harder for us to connect into because we are a little bit at a different season of the journey. And when I heard that, I don't remember where I initially heard that concept, but it freed me up so much to just make a difference with who I was in that moment right. and the skills I had at that moment. Right. Because there were so many people who were just a step or, or two ahead of me that had made the biggest difference for me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. A mm -hmm. hundred percent when we get outside of our way too, and yeah. we start thinking about serving, we start thinking about building community. That's really where the magic happens. And yeah. you kind of like let go and like, let it just happen. is is so incredibly important. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's so good. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about vision and your vision for the future specifically, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I do think we're just in this interesting world where media has changed mm. so much. And Someone told me that print was like dead. You're like, we're bringing it back, baby. What? Right? Well, I think in in some of the traditional ways Maybe. that is true and it's right. meant to innovate. But that's what I love about what you're creating and continuing to innovate on. And I think just if we come back to the the premise and what I connected with initially of of what no really means is to, to shine that spotlight on That's people right. who you might not get to know otherwise. Right. So as we go into this next, you know, I think it's interesting being about seven years into the business. There's, there's a lot of research about like cycles happen in seven years, like in yeah. our personal lives and our businesses. Yeah. I feel that for me. The seven business. year itch. I right? mean, like we're making changes now. That's yes. Right. So when you look ahead to the next seven years, what is your ultimate vision for the impact you want no to have? What conversation do you think we'll be reflecting back on 
another seven years from now episode 7,500 or something yeah. Like yeah. That. Maybe you'll have me back then. <laughs> Maybe. You're invited. There's an open <laughs> invite. But I would yeah. really love to hear when you think about that, what do you want to be celebrating impact wise vision, what, what you see it's evolved into seven years from so now? So I think for me, it's really going back to the core of who we are and who mm-hmm. I am. And that is telling the stories shedding the spotlight on Mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. And part of our mission is, and our tagline is you deserve to be seen, heard, celebrated, and known for your hard work and achievements. So that's where we were for like the first five years. And then around five years, five to seven, we really added the second part, which was because when women like you are honored, you inspire the next generation. And that has become so much of our mission as well. Mm So we are firm believers. I'm a firm believer of if you can't see it, you can't be it. Mm -hmm. And so I go back to the core of that's me. Let me be the one Mm -hmm. who can tell the stories, who can shed light and showcase these women to, to focus on, you know, publishing and telling the stories of these undiscovered gems, the women who Mm -hmm. are like in the conference rooms who are behind the scenes, who are making huge, big, bold decisions and are creating fantastic businesses. Let's tell their story. I also really focus on diversity as a huge core Mm -hmm. pillar of ours is diverse women. And that is not just industries. That's like ages, races, colors, backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds, all the things I want to make sure all women are represented. And, and I do that because again, if you can't see it visually, you really just can't be it. If you can't hear it, you can't be it. You don't know what's possible. Right. And we're in this place now with media that allows us to do that. So Mm -hmm. major media increases. So we have our publications, our city guide, statewide, hardcover, coffee table books. We have our print is not dead by the way. No baby. It is not not dead. So print, digital, we have a new insider platform. I'm excited to share more. Yeah. Tell us more about that. Oh my gosh, this thing is like next level. This is like major media outlet for women by women. It's coming it's in about just a, time. Oh, it's about <laughs> damn time. It's where, you know, we give our women the ability to be content creators. They're sharing their knowledge. They're sharing their um their know-how. It's where you're coming to consume, learning from a woman, growing from a woman, woman, being inspired by a woman. Mm-hmm. We're doing major um fireside chats with some of the really top amazing dynamic women that a lot of us know inside the insider platform. It's really our give back on how we're gonna help bring those women forward. Um it's it's just it's sexy. That's all and you when need this to know, comes people. and when this comes out, I will give you guys like all the details for how you can get inside the insider platform, but it is essentially a media outlet with premium video, premium learning opportunities, storytelling, just journalistic Mm. editorial pieces, just for dynamic, ambitious women that want to meet and learn from others. It's like, who needs Netflix anymore? Really? Right. It's a little bit, and I don't know, like it's a little bit of like Forbes women meets master class, the master class meets like podcasting meets like all the behind the scenes of the summits that you can't go to. And mm. the like, if I was a fly on the wall, so good. Like, let me get inside of these brains of these women. It's girlfriend, like shop talk and like all of the things meaty. It's like, meaty. Sign me it's up. Good. Yes. Sign me yeah. up. Yes. And you're going to be, you're going to be a part of this. Great. Too. I'm, as soon I'm as we launch, Anything you need. That's it. Yeah. I love your passion for sharing the stories and how you made that connection of the importance of, of sharing our stories because another woman then sees what's possible for her. That's right. What do you wish more people knew about your story? That I have a story. Right. So, so many people look at, like I said, like this Sarah version now, and they just know her for her. They don't think about, and this is not just about me and my story. This is about every woman or human that we encounter, all the things that it took for her to be her, to -hmm. become who she is Mm -hmm. today. And someone said, I talk about this a lot on stage. Someone said to me recently, well, actually a couple of years ago, I just thought you're a poodle girl, Sarah. Oh, what? Do you know what a poodle girl is? No, I've never. I didn't I'm like now I'm. I have all these images in my head. But a poodle girl. Did you ask her to clarify? Yes, I surely okay, did. What, what is a poodle girl? I'm definitely not that. I don't know what that is. 
it's the, you know, it's from like the fifties where the girls with the poodle skirts are the ones that in my, my, you know, my vision of the poodle girl is the one that like holds her little baby dog. Yep. She's just so prissy. Mm-hmm. She's just so prissy and so perfect yeah. on the outside. Yeah. She just has her puppy and she's just, you know, that's what she thought I was. And she said, she said, I had no idea mm-hmm. that you weren't that because when I looked at you, I thought that's who you were. Mm. And I go, Oh no, 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 no. Like now this was meanwhile, this is after we were, we were in Calgary, Canada, which is the coldest place on earth in, in February. And she was picking me up from the airport and she didn't close her like back all the way, like her whatever the trunk the thing hatch, the hatch trunk. all the way we're doing the hand motion the hat, you know, we like know what we're trunk, but like that and she um and so as we're driving away like up goes my my all my des- yes I have designer right I've worked very hard my designer bags are like on the snow and my computer is like out like all over the snow <laughs> and the and everything right oh, no. and so so I just like I go into reactive mode get out the car yeah gather my things and put them back in. Right. You think that that, and she goes, I just thought you were a poodle girl. What did you, she thought I was going to like yell at her or something like, how dare you or whatever. But I thought that's interesting. Perception is not everything friends. Mm -hmm. Like what you see is based off of the filters and your own experience of what you can see, but it's not always reality. And sometimes we have to take a step in and really like look at the person and get to know them. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about telling the stories of women and showcasing these women for all of their incredible things, because we work really hard every day and we don't know what it took to get here. Mm-hmm. We had, and I know like we had to fight tooth and nail. We have had to endure and you have too, right? Mm-hmm. I know your story. We've all had to go through it. So I think mm-hmm. that's a big thing. If it's not even just looking at me and my story, I will be the testimony for all of the, all of the women out there. I will be the success story. And I love that, but it's not easy. It's not easy. And whether you are in the beginning part, or you're in, you know, a, a further along and you have had successes, that's great. But mm-hmm. that's what mm-hmm. I think. It's just like, look at the authentic woman. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're not poodle girls usually. Even if they have a poodle, right? That's right. Just the how multifaceted we really all are. Right. What do you think is something that people would be surprised to learn about you? Like um, the real you. Hmm. Behind the scenes. Should we oh ask Michael? Your gosh. husband's here. He is. I know <laughs> that like, I'm just so like, I'm so normal. And usually I'm in like my troll state. Oh, I love this. All the time. Yeah. Right. And I think that, you know, outside of like being a teen mom and a high, high school dropout, I think that's like the biggest piece that most people wouldn't know mm. that I just like really, really, really am curious. And I love like innovation I geek out over like numbers because I still am an accountant so like at, at heart just got spreadsheets so, at heart so sexy so sexy like I want to make love to numbers yes like, I don't know it's just like a part of that but I think too like I mm. actually really do care like I care yeah. about everything 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 and everybody like I really care about that yeah that comes through it does and also like share the love for nice things and it's just like so beautiful to be the embodiment and you really are this of being all of it and being all of it fully and celebrating other women being all of their full self and we don't need to be right like we don't I don't need to be in the front Mm -hmm. I think that's something too like we Mm -hmm. we don't have to be in the front we can celebrate and push up from the back and I think that's okay too So I know in order to build this vision of yours, more and more women are going to need to know where to plug in. So where's the best place for people to connect with the vision now? What are some of the opportunities for people to be featured? What's what's upcoming that you really want to make sure to leave people with if they really connect with this mission and vision and want to stay up to speed on what's coming in the future? Always social media, yeah. the no women, K N O W women website, the no women.com obviously is the best. You can follow me. I'm Sarah Benkin Fishy. I'm sure we'll put that in the show notes because we don't need to like we don't spell need to that spell. out. 
Also, I think like the important thing is if you know a woman in your life, there's someone who is doing incredible things. We want to know them. Mm -hmm. Um, So we have a whole list of nominations. Everything we do Mm -hmm. is by nominations and vetting. We have strict vetting and interview processes for whatever variety Mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. Um, We also have a membership that's open. The Insider platform will be ready by the time this airs. Oh, good. uh, Yeah, it's launching in just a couple of weeks. Okay, we'll make sure to... uh, to coordinate that, the that, launch that, with it. That, 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 okay. for sure. The insider platform. So whether you want to consume and meet other women mm. who are doing great things to inspire you or learn from them, or you are her, like, yeah. I want to know you regardless. Yeah. I mean, I think that's yeah. the biggest thing. Connect, hit me up. Let's yes. hang out. There's nothing more beautiful too than seeing all the places where our communities really cross over. And I think that's like the true heart that we've both had in building our businesses mm-hmm. is you're, offering women opportunities that I'm not I'm offering different things that no isn't doing and and just to realize that there's such value in plugging into the networks and communities that you can everywhere because it just adds more value to what everyone gets yeah it grows each of our collective networks it helps us meet those women in the three categories and you've always been that for me and I think you know, people could look at our brands from the outset and think, oh, they not. I don't think anyone would say competitors. I think, no, yeah. but I don't think people even really know how much from the beginning you have been that cheerleader. Yeah. You've been someone who has encouraged me. We've gotten to connect. You were in the room, bought a ticket to come to the Powerhouse Women event. Every Every single one of them, You're except just, for the first one. I didn't know about you at the first oh, one. Oh, that's right. We didn't that, know each other then. But you brown hair then? I'm like, what color was what that? Was that was a strawberry. One? That was strawberry blonde. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. But yes. you just are the real deal in that Thank sense. You. And I'm so grateful to know you. Ah, likewise, yeah. sister. Yeah. I love that. So one final question, and this one oh. is a fun one. Okay. To I always say it's it's also the reminder for me to pause and do this because while I'm in my vision building mode, yeah. I don't often remember to stop and just acknowledge myself. You know, there's there's so many moments that just go unacknowledged because it's like not the not cute stuff behind the scenes building mm-hmm. a business. And so it could be anything big or small, but just something you want to pause right now and acknowledge yourself for. Oh my gosh. We just call it a powerhouse moment. So first thing that comes to mind when I say, what's a recent powerhouse moment that you want to celebrate with us? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Oh my gosh. Um, so I think it's probably like launching into New York. New York mm. City. Gotta be. Love that city it's so been, much. Like, it's it is it's epic. Yeah, I mean, I love. I grew up going to New York yeah. all the time, but the women that we're bringing into our community are like next to none, next level. Mm. So I think it's like getting into penetrating, if I can say that word. Pen- we, can, we can say penetrating that penetrating the New York City market. <laughs> obviously, amazing. And just to have those moments that you're like, wow, I we can remember it. as a, like as a girl being so amazed by how big this city is and to realize you're creating such a presence there mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really exciting. Really exciting. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. I appreciate you. You're the best. Mm-hmm.